Good evening, buenas noches. Welcome uh, to Cliffy Land's Global Cooking Adventure. As we celebrate having completed cooking a meal for every country in the United Nations, all 193 of them, you can find all out all about that at cliffyland.com. You can follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr as well. Tonight, esta noche, we are cooking the food of mi patria, of my people, uh, Puerto Rico. This is the third night of, and final night of cooking Puerto Rico. And tonight we are making what is arguably the national dish of Puerto Rico, which would be mofongo. We're making mofongo con salsa de tomate. And I spelled that wrong. Da. Um, spell check. Okay. So that is, uh, mofongo is a mashed plantains. And uh, we are going to be adding uh, some shrimp to that to make it a mofongo estofado. So uh, we are simulcasting on Meerkat and Busker. Hello, Busker. This is the new apron. Let's uh, flip you around so you can see. Hey there. There we are. Hi. Ah, yeah, si mismo. Mi gente. So we are simulcasting on Meerkat and Periscope. And I'm going to hook up the uh, Meerkat people over here. Or rather, sorry, I'm still used to saying meerkat, uh, the busker people. Um, and uh, let me move you over here to the deep fryer. Oh, fun. Get you some room over here. Hi, and you're going to go up in the sky. Isn't that exciting? And again, if you see me taking pictures, it is for the blog. The blog is located at cliffyland.com. And right now, I am heating up the... A deep fryer to uh, 325 is the temperature we're trying to get at, uh, and I plugged that in kind of late. So let me give you a quick overview of the ingredients that we have and what we're going to be working with. So uh, I'm cooking this for two people, which uh, presents something of a challenge since the recipe uh, is usually for more. But here is our key, a little helper, a mortar and pestle, but the one specifically uh, usually done for mofongo because it's bigger and deeper. Hey, buddy. Hey, who am I seeing? Oh, Chef Lizette, how are you doing? Buena, como te va? We are making mofongo. Mofongo estofado con camarones. Stuffed with shrimp. Now, the deal with the uh, stuffing part is that's not really traditional uh, in homes in the old-timey recipes. However, recipe uh, restaurants traditionally at this point will offer it stuffed. Um, how do you like this after live streaming? It's okay. The type is kind of small for my bad eyes. Um, so, good question though, Chef Lizette. I hope you're doing well with yours. Uh, again, we are uh, simulcasting on Meerkat and Periscope. But let me show you, we had three, we got three green plantains and we have cut them into one inch slices and we have them in hot water. Here we're going to start frying them in a minute as soon as the uh, temperature gets up to where it's supposed to be. I really I should have plugged that in sooner. Um, also, oh, we have got a world of garlic that we have chopped up over here. We have uh, several others of those sitting over. And then um, once we have that all mashed, then we're going to start in on the, um, the uh, tomato sauce, which is going to involve Peeled and sliced tomatoes and diced onion right there. And then we're going to stuff it with the shrimp. This is a locally caught wild shrimp. And we're going to dress that with some white wine right there. Okay, so uh, let me get a plate uh, to drain those on. I've been a little behind today, which totally stinks. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Uh, again, uh, we have uh, done, successfully did a meal for every country in the United Nations from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, and uh, we are celebrating by finishing off the food of Puerto Rico, uh, which is not the United Nations member because it is part of the United States. But that's my people, and I wanted to get a chance to do the food. So, um... Then, for the next couple weeks, we're going to be doing some of the in-between countries, the countries that are not United Nations member states, uh, but uh, I would like to cover 
and the, uh, those are all a little bit controversial for their own reasons, but those are Kosovo, which is next week, um, Palestine, um, the, the, the Vatican City, no, Taiwan and Vatican City. And uh, then we will go take a couple weeks off and we'll return to begin, officially begin the global cooking adventure. Uh, starting again with Afghanistan, we'll be doing one night a week on the uh, countries. Any given second night that we cook, we'll be doing the 50 states. And then on any given third night, we'll be doing a cuisine selected at random with your help. I will be asking people to write me on uh, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and suggest a uh, cuisine, a very specific cuisine or specific dish for a country. So uh, I'd like to be able to cover some countries I wasn't able to, some parts of countries, uh, because, uh, you know, doing trying to do a whole country in a week doesn't work too well. Hey, you're here. Yes, Michael V. How are you doing? Superstar of Busker. Thank you so much for inviting people. So um, the temperature isn't quite there on the oil, and I really don't feel like dropping it in yet. Uh, I'm trying to get to 325, and hoping it's going to get there. Tribe's going to get there soon, because we're going to take that and we're going to mash it up in our, uh, in our big wooden mortar and pestle right here. So, uh, gotta get my... Uh, yep, 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 okay, and we have that. So here we're gonna, we're gonna go. Uh, hope I'm not making a mistake here. So this is gonna splatter, I know. Oh god, it is gonna splatter too, isn't it? Let me, let me dry those off. That would be a bad move. So let me dry these off. If I know anything from potatoes, I know that that's going to happen. And, of course, now it's at the right temperature. Okay. So, let's do it this way. Okay. And there you go. This is going to be in there, supposedly, for about six minutes. So this is going to get mashed up. Now one recipe I saw was talking about doing it uh, with a food processor, which uh, I'm sure can happen, but uh, I am also sure I would get catch all kind of holy hell for using a food processor for this, uh, since as that would not be traditional. And we are uh, doing Puerto Rican influenced hip hop apparently. Uh, I don't know how that is, but hey, maybe Fat Joe. He's, he's Puerto Rican, is he? Okay. And drying off this. Uh, why wet them? Uh, to, I, I sliced them earlier, and uh, they were in warm water to keep them from browning. No, they're not processed at all. I, they are fresh, and I cut them myself just before starting, so they are not processed. They are fresh green plantains that I sliced myself. Platanos, yes. And uh, so, no, they are not processed plantains. Um, I just had them in the hot water um, so they don't turn brown while I uh, prep the rest. So that's why they were in water. So again, the reason I put them in water is because I sliced them earlier. I didn't want them to turn brown. Platanos, sí, es así mismo. And this is uh, hot water they're supposed to be in. And I know I'm probably stuffing this deep fryer way more than I should, but um, I'm a little... A little bit behind so uh, these are three hi there uh, these are three green plantains that I uh, I sliced into the one inch slices and uh, almost done and dropping it into the oil which of course now is not the same temperature because I opened it up okay and please 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 do not let this explode on me okay Okay, let me get this out of the way. I'm hoping we're not going to have an explosion. Okay, here goes. Please, baby, don't, don't die. Okay. So here we go. We're going to time it for... Set timer for six minutes. So... 
uh, you making tostones? No, I'm making mofongo. Well, tostones are sort of the first part. Tostones would be uh, that if I just did these plantains, fried them, and then mashed them and put salt on them, boom, that would be done. They would be tostones. Uh, but when you make mofongo, uh, you are uh, putting that in uh, to this sucker right here and smashing it down. Uh, so, um, now uh, while we wait, I'm going to take this one garlic clove that I have here, and I'm gonna mash it around the edge of the, hey sweetie. I, uh, I smell plantains. Yes. Uh, Fine. The, uh, we're gonna mash this around the edge of the mortar to try to get the camarones. Si, sí, camarones. Le voy a tofarlo con camarones. I'm gonna stuff it with uh, shrimp, which of course I have to cook towards the end of this. Whose recipe? This is a mixture, if you live in Tani so well, yes. Mm. Um, this is a mixture of, well, there really isn't a whole lot of variety in the official recipe. The Cocina Criolla Puerto Rican Cookery um, is sort of like the Bible of Puerto Rican cooking. And so it's going off of that and one um, from Savor, which uh, involved the tomato sauce. And then just another one that involved the shrimp. So I uh, basically wanted to uh, do that sort of restaurant style because um, I wanted like a whole meal and I wanted a protein in with the with the carbohydrate of the plantains. So uh, like I said, we're just trying to get the garlic uh, flavor around the outside of the mortar and pestle first and then we're going to start mixing in the uh, chicken broth. Uh, which is over here. And uh, so we have a couple more minutes while we fry. Hey, thank you so much for the hearts. Muchísimas gracias. Por fin estoy haciendo la comida de mi gente. I've cooked the food of every other country in the world and finally get to do I uh, like the stuff I grew up on. And the funny part is, of course, that I never got to cook it myself. I got to eat it plenty. Uh, but this is the first time I myself am making mofongo. The funny part is that as a kid, I didn't really like mofongo too much. Um, I found it kind of dry. Um, my mother will happily admit that she is not a cook. She wasn't a cook, which is sort of why I never learned to cook. Show the ring. It's beautiful. The ring? This ring. Do you know Lantana or Boca Raton? Yes, that's uh, south of here, about uh, 45 minutes to an hour south. Hypoloxo, indeed, that is, you know, about 35, 40 minutes uh, from here. We're in Jupiter, Florida, which is uh, in South Florida, about two hours north of Miami, about an hour north of Florida. was in Puerto Rico several months ago. Love the people, food, and the island. So cool. Yes, like them. Yes, very nice. Uh, yes, thank you. Puerto Rico is a lovely, lovely island. Um should visit. Take a cruise, take a flight, stay in a hotel, enjoy the beach. Jupiter is awesome. Hey, cool, thank you. Um, with uh, Periscope, people can see Carlos Arroyo. That name sounds familiar, I don't know why. Is that your name? Is that somebody else? Um, so we have two and minutes and 28 seconds. CC, ah, Carlos Arroyo, I remember that. Um, we knew Arroyos growing up. That was a, a common name, Baloncesto. Oh, you play basketball. Well, yes. El Junque, El Yunque is the best. Yes, with a Y. Uh, that is the rainforest, which is uh, on the northeastern sort of part of the island. Uh, you can take a day trip from uh, San Juan and go up there and see the waterfalls, but take some time when you go and get there early uh, and hopefully you're able-bodied and can climb because the waterfall you can see from your car is lovely but you're gonna have to hike in uh, to see the uh, the big waterfalls and then that's truly breathtaking um, I always wanted to go to the hiking parts as a kid but I never got to uh, because first I was with my grandparents and they were too old to hike and then later on I was with my parents and they at that point were too old to go hiking and then um, I dragged on myself and I ran out of time. So finally I got to go and it was pouring rain, but we had our ponchos and went out and I finally, finally, finally got to see the waterfalls that all my, you know, Anglo friends that, you know, visited and cruises got to see all the time. Um, but there's so much beautiful about Puerto Rico. Uh, 
En mi viejo San Juan. Uh, we have 57 seconds. And then we're going to dry these on the paper towels over here. So let me get that going over here. And uh, we're going to see how this goes. A. Okay, we have uh, 42 seconds. And they're supposed to be tender. Uh, we made a piñon on Friday, which involved frying the long strips of plantains. It was like a lasagna made with plantains and meat. Check the cooking bananas. Yeah, well, I don't want to get the heat uh, to, yeah, see, because it, it took that, while, that long to get back up. Hey, Dad, hey there. Making him a fongo. Aquí. Trece segundo. Thirteen seconds left. And the late dinners in San Juan are the best. Yes, well, you know, we in, in Puerto Rico and Cuba, we, you know, traditionally eat dinner later than... Cubans t t t eat a little later than we do. Uh, but yes, late dinners are quite common. So, off we go. So they are golden. Boom. Take off the power from that. Shush, be quiet. Okay, now I can't move that because that's uh, kind of a raging boil over there. So let me move some stuff around so I can uh, move you away, 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 away. So here, let's shift just, just a step to the right. Okay, here, a little higher so you can see, hopefully. Hello! Ah. Oh boy, you're just not one to stay up. Okay, so we're gonna move you over about a few inches over here. And so you don't fall down there. Okay, here we go. I need to take some pictures. The pictures are for the blog. The blog is located at cliffyland.com. Uh, for the next couple weeks, the blogs will continue to be text-based but once we start back over again, uh, it is going to be uh, short form videos, edited versions of what you are seeing here. So, here we go. We're gonna, I should use a something for this. Those are probably hot. So we're gonna put these, los sotones, the, uh, the piece of fried plantain, into the mortar. Ah, the counter is clean. I cleaned it myself. And now we mash. And I'm going to put in a little bit of the chicken broth while we do that. And I am trying, resisting the urge to grab these hot plantains with my bare hands. Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, one of these recipes said to use, um, you could use a food processor, and uh, I found that curious, because I've never, I'm, I'm, well, that would probably mess up my food processor, for one thing, because uh, this is kind of dense. So, in you go. Is it hot enough? Here. Maybe I can touch it. Okay. So did you see the new toy? New toy? <laughs> there was the last one. Oh, I thought uh, you had that already. No, I did not. I had a metal one, not big enough. Musa? No, uh, mofongo. Mofongo, which are um, mashed plantains. Uh, this actually, mofongo is uh, traditionally Puerto Rican. It comes, it's an Afro-Caribbean dish. Um, it uh, has its origins in African fufu. Uh, fufu being mashed, um, a number of things that uh, is in in many African dishes would be mashed sweet potatoes or mashed plantains or mashed uh, cassava, any number of mashed dishes. So that's uh, its origins uh, coming from Africa. Uh, but Puerto Rico sort of kind of created the mofongo, and uh, it's very popular in Dominican cooking as well. Uh, even though they also credit the uh, the Puerto Rican with 
the uh, origin of it. So I'm gonna try not to splash too much everywhere. One of the uh, problems, for, the, for one of the reasons I didn't like mofongo growing up is I always find it kind of dry. And so we're trying to, to uh, not be dry. And uh, this is uh, chicken broth. Chicken broth that we shoved in here. And uh, we coated the mortar with garlic earlier. So, trying to infuse the chicken broth into the plantains. And uh, I, I tried to measure it down, chicken stock, yes, chicken stock. And I tried to measure it down from the original recipe that served six people. Um, so I hope, uh, I hope my math was right. Okay, I'm th and there's a spill. Um, but I have a bowl somewhere where this is gonna land in. Let me make sure I got everything right first, hold on. Okay, good. So we're gonna transfer this to a bowl. Yeah, come on. And I'm sorry, what are you making? I'm making mofongo. Mofongo is a, a mashed plantain dish uh, that is a, one of the most traditional Puerto Rican dishes that you can find. Uh, I'm going to get a spoon to spoon that out. Uh, we, this is the third night of cooking the food of Puerto Rico. Uh, we did on Friday, I had a big family party and brought the neighbors over. And we had a big uh, to-do with a piñon, which is sort of like a plantain lasagna. And uh, we made uh, ensalada tropical, tropical salad with onions and cabbage and uh, sofrito. And we made uh, gandulas asopao, which is uh, basically rice and pigeon peas, which is sort of the traditional uh, dish uh, in terms of rice and beans in Puerto Rico. And uh, then on Sunday, we made uh, ropa vieja, which is shredded beef. Uh, translates to uh, old clothes, or yes, old clothes. Let me clean some the counter off here for a second, since I made a mess. Okay, now we're going to move to the stove. So we're going to have to get everyone in formation over here let me make sure i have everything right yes okay so i'm gonna hold on let me move some stuff around here make room on the stove for everyone okay you can go over there okay okay here we go we're moving uh, you to the stove now mm -mm 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 -mm. we're gonna get working on the tomato sauce uh for the mofongo and also on the shrimp uh, which is uh, we're going to stuff into the mofongo and since it always makes a big splatter I have got my splatter guard right here are you double broadcasting yes we are on meerkat and uh, sorry on busker and periscope I'm still stuck on meerkat uh, we are on meerkat for about a year so or a little over a year so uh, that's gonna happen uh, getting a little confused. I'm heating up the uh, the skillet right now uh, but here now uh, we would have bacon but uh, there is an issue with me being able to get the bacon today which involved 30 people waiting. Do you know bacon? Uh, well this is actually salt pork uh, but you can also do it with chicharron. Do you have the same name on Periscope? Yes, Cliffy Land on both and you can also find us on YouTube. Search for Cliffy Land. That's Cliffy Land on YouTube. Or uh, go to cliffyland.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on uh, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, YouTube. Uh, all those good places. So we're going to heat up and render down this salt pork. It would be bacon. Uh, but like I said, I didn't want to buy a whole package of bacon. Uh, since we don't eat that much bacon around here. And uh, uh, I think I've seen the videos. I follow these chefs on YouTube. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, if you go to YouTube, please subscribe. 
Uh, that would be really groovy. Uh, once I have enough subscribers, I can finally get uh, a domain, or rather a custom URL uh, for the channel. So that would be groovy. So we're heating up uh, the, uh, it would be bacon, salt, pork, and this is going to go, wow, it's saying about 15 minutes. Uh, and then we're going to stir in the garlic cloves, and I need some olive oil also. Uh, will you mix bacon with what? The bacon is going to be mixed in with um, the uh, with the mofongo, and then there's going to be the tomato sauce, uh, which is going to uh, be poured over the mofongo. Yes, that exactly what's going to happen. Oil pork, uh, salt pork, salt pork. Uh, so it's uh, fatty, and it's going to render out the fat quite nicely, but it's also going to splatter. It's a thing that's going to happen. So uh, I'm sorry about the, the white balance. It's really weird. Could you spell it? Salt? Salt? S-A-L-T. Salt, like sugar and salt. And pork, P-O-R-K. Pork. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, which is like that. I like, I like bacon. It's just not smoked or cured like bacon. Uh, but if a recipe calls for salt pork, you can use bacon. I was trying to find out if you could do the reverse. Salt and pork. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's preserved, so it lasts longer. Um, but in the traditional Puerto Rican dishes, uh, in the cookbook, and I'll show you the cookbook since we have a second. Um, this is sort of like, again, sort of the Bible of Puerto Rican cooking. It's called uh, Comida Criolla in Spanish. Do, 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 or Puerto Rican cooking in English. It's been in print uh, since the 1930s. And the, the first Puerto Rican cookbook was published in 1857, I believe, or 18, somewhere thereabouts. And about eggs, no, no, well, no eggs here, not in this dish. That would be a, a curious addition. Um, it, yes, the same book, one's in English, one's in Spanish. Same book. Criolla means sort of, you know, of the people, the folk, you know, it's the, it's meaning like of our people, in this case, Puerto Rican. So that is uh, what Criolla means. The food of the, of the people, campesinos, the farm people, los jíbaros, which is, you know, a word that... Uh, Uh, could be like peasants. It could be interpreted a number of ways. Well, so we are getting this down. I'm going to turn this down. I've got a little too hot now. I'm trying to render down the fat. And then we're going to add in the garlic cloves. And uh, then we're going to have salt and pepper added to it. So let me get those ready. And, uh, oh, let me take a picture of you. Smile. Okay. Do you know Brazilian food? Uh, I'm familiar with Brazilian food. I cooked Brazil uh, in on the. You either jump over. You could do what you like. Um, uh, Brazilian. I did a uh, Brazilian dish that was early in the alphabet since the letter B. Um, and this is this was a four-year challenge of me learning to cook by doing the food of a different country in alphabetical order around the world. Which meant that uh, Brazil suffered from my not knowing enough. So when I tried to make the uh, the piojada, I kind of I was good until the very end, and I really messed it up. So uh, when I go back around the world uh, for the global cooking adventure, beginning in uh, the middle of September, uh, I am going to be getting to Brazil in uh, what is it, 15 weeks. So I'll get to try it again. Everything's going to be about seeing what I did before, how I can do it better the next time. And uh, so I will, I will try to learn from my mistakes, and instead of text blogging, I'll be doing short form videos, uh, four minute long videos, which is gonna talk about the uh, this, but just faster. So, uh, I'm gonna turn this down some more. This is browning nicely. These are about a quarter inch, um, cuts on the salt pork. Like I said, it could be bacon. And uh, I may not have cut it as small as I should have, but oopsie. It'll be okay. 
So, yes, it is not a kosher meal. Not only that, we have shellfish and pork together. So, go figure. And it's getting a little smoky in here. Getting smoky up in here. So we're getting the fat off of the bacon, or rather not the bacon, the salt pork. Uh, it has um, a salty a saltiness to it, obviously, because it's called salt pork. Uh, if you're using salt pork in place of bacon in other recipes, uh, I gather that you want to be sure to soak it first to get uh, some of the brine out of it. Uh, but we didn't do that here, but that's okay. Also, we're learning as we go. We have a um, good amount of the fat that's rendered off. It's getting quite smoky. We have another couple minutes. Uh, I need to get going. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Jesse. It was lovely seeing you. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe uh, in all the respective places that you may wonder. And this is uh, browning nicely. I need to make sure that I'm patient enough so I get enough of that fat off because the fat is going to be really important in mixing that in with the mofongo, the plantains. Thank you. And a couple more minutes. It said 15 minutes, but that really did seem like an awful long time. That seems like an awful long time. Oh, that reminds me. Shoot. Um, over here. Well, I don't have to do it right now, but I'm going to. Uh, in the cast iron skillet, I'm going to heat up uh, the skillet and uh, get some one tablespoon... Two tablespoons, three songs. Oh, it's my dad's favorite song. Just kidding, dad. Me gusta la gasolina. Me gusta la gasolina. Me gusta la gasolina. Daddy Yankee from from Carolina, in Puerto Rico, near San Juan. So we're heating that up. Uh, that's where uh, shrimp is gonna go. Um, so I'm trying to heat up that, have that ready for when I need it to be ready getting quite smoky. You can see that, right? Gasolina, gusta la gasolina, canta la gasolina. Okay, you know what? That looks, it looks kind of ready. I'm not going to wait the whole 15 minutes. Um, so now we're going to add in here the uh, three tables, sorry, three cloves of minced garlic. Boom. And uh, then we're gonna add three tablespoons of olive oil. One, two, three. And gonna mix that up. And then I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper. First the pepper here, the pitcher, that too. Okay. Pepper. And not too much salt since that's salt pork already. And we'll taste that when once it gets into the uh, into the general dish here. Okay. I wish I could like to switch to camera two, but I don't have a camera two to switch to. So um, that means I'm gonna have to move everyone because I can't I can't do it over the stove. So you're gonna. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, could you write that again? I missed it. I wasn't looking. I apologize. Okay, moving over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you go there. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to take all of this and pour it into the plantains. And uh, that would be lovely if I could take a picture of it. 
Okay, smile. Okay. And in you go. The garlic got the garlic got a little burnt, I'm not gonna lie. That's that's a that's a that's a me problem. Okay. Now we're gonna mix this up. I'm gonna use the, the mash up for this. Ah. And mix it thoroughly. And then we're gonna taste the sucker. Okay. So let's give that sucker a taste, eh? Here we go. Bottoms up. Good. Um, I can taste that it's not bacon, but uh, there isn't that much salt in it, so we need, definitely needed more salt. So let's mix you up. And give that another taste. Hector! Hey, my man! My loyal friend! How are you doing? Estamos cocinando mofongo. We're making a mofongo here. So let's give that another taste. Hold on, no double dipping here. See how this goes. Hola! Hey, 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 hey. One more time. One more time. Good, but I really should have used bacon. I really should have used bacon, and I should not have burned the garlic. Why didn't you use bacon? Because um, I didn't want to get a whole um, thing of bacon. Uh, Some salt needed, yes. Um, and uh, I was going to go to the uh, market where I can buy uh, smaller portions of bacon, individual rashes, individual slices. And I got there, and it was about 20 people waiting. And uh, I did not want my milk to um, from the other market to um, melt in the car while I waited. So, it really does need more salt. You're right. But it's a little bit of a burnt taste, which is not optimal. Cause I, cause I burned the garlic. Did I miss the pastelon? Uh, no, no hice pastelon. Uh, hice piñon el viernes pasado. I did piñon on uh, last Friday. Uh, which was great. What market are you using? Oh, are you here? Uh, I had to go to four different markets. I went to this Latin market uh, for some stuff, and then I went to, I tried to go to Fresh Market, uh, which is where I wanted to get the bacon, and that didn't work out too well. And then I went to Pinder's to get the uh, seafood, and Publix to get the rest. Mmm. Mmm, that's better. Okay, I think we're there. Yay! Okay. So we need to go back over to the stove. Are you in? Okay. You get to come back over here. Okay. So we're going to add some olive oil here. Also. And then... Uh, we are going to, uh, hold on, make sure I got everything right. Okay, we're gonna add in our minced onion, which is over here. This is gonna work on the tomato, uh, the tomato sauce for the mofongo. Bang, zoom. I'm gonna try to keep this warm in the oven. Meanwhile. Okay, so uh, where am I here? So we're trying to soften the onions. Oops, sorry, I missed your comment. 
Now it's saying about 15 minutes on uh, to soften the onion, so it strikes me as odd. Um, cause, uh, 50 minutes is all, no overcooking. Yeah, I do that this. I try not to. I try not to. Let's put it like that. And, uh, wow, I've got onions flying everywhere. Ow. Okay. So while that heats up, that's four you've missed. Four, four what? What did I miss? One, two, three, four. Oh, four comments. Yes. Um, well, I'm busy looking down and trying not to burn myself. That's one of the problems with Periscope. Uh, I think on Buster they seem to stick around a little bit longer. Um, but then again, that's what I'm seeing on the corner of my eye down this way. Thank you for the hearts and likes and all that good stuff. So uh, when this uh, cooks down, uh, we are going to add the tomatoes and cook those until they're broken down. Uh, the, now, the recipe called for a can of whole tomatoes. And I'm telling you right now, I didn't want to get a 24 ounce can of uh, whole tomatoes, even though it would have been easier. So what I did was, is I peeled the tomatoes. Uh, these are two toma fresh tomatoes. And I peeled those, and we're gonna try to break those down in here. Um, and that's gonna go for how long? About 10 minutes. So, wow, I'm thirsty. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, que se tengo. Uh, where did I put my water? My water, my water. I put it somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, buenas noches, mi amigo. Igualmente. Saludos a todos. Una cerveza, por favor. <laughs> yes. Después. Tengo mi cerveza por allá. No es medalla, pero, you know. Medalla is the, uh, the, the, the Puerto Rican beer. And uh, I'll be honest, I, the first time I had it, I had a light one. Um, and I don't know, it was a bad day or a bad batch or something. It just was not good. So I was determined not to have one again, even though everyone I know loved it because it's like the Puerto Rican beer. And when we were just in Puerto Rico a few uh, couple months ago, I uh, had it and I was like, okay, it's good. I agree, it's good. Okay, this is in there. Uh, it's seeming, it's, I'm trying to keep the temperature down, but uh, they're uh, just kind of on the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the tomatoes in now. Que? Que? Que what? Thinking. Okay, here goes with the tomatoes. Wish me luck. There's no sauce or anything involved with these. So I'm gonna break those down. These are whole. I should have smashed those. I should cut those in some fashion. That's dumb to me, just trust me. That's very stupid. Very stupid. Luck. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's try that again, eh? Okay. Let's try cutting those into smaller pieces, shall we? That would be smarter. Uh. Grab the first knife I find. One moment, please. Uh, no bueno. Yeah, I know. Here. <clears throat> okay. Let me wash my hand real quick. Sorry. Yep, yeah, that happens. It happens. I've learned. I've learned to accept the mistakes. Know that mistakes will be made, and uh, not to freak out too much about them. That's uh, one of the lessons I've learned in this whole process. It used to be that uh, I was just such a perfectionist. I didn't want to, um, you know, make any mistakes, and uh, and I obsessed way too much. So um, I've learned to learn to relax. I'm gonna turn this down a little because it seems a little hot. So, uh, give me one second here. Uh, yep. Okay, so we're gonna break these down. This is the, for the tomato sauce. And uh, I know I have. 
That's a lot of uh, a lot of garlic happening here, and I think I have more than I need, which is weird. Nope, nope, that went in already. Oh well, we just got lots of garlic in the shrimp. Fix los tomates. Fix los tomates. Did I take a picture of the tomatoes? Elaborate, please. Más información, por favor. Like I said, this would be a can. This had a can, a 24-ounce can of whole tomatoes, and we're just—I uh, got fresh tomatoes that I that I cut up myself. So um, I'm just gonna, you know, let them break down over 10 minutes' time. Pica. Yes, that's well. Pica los tomates. Yeah. I'm gonna try to. Smash them with the spatula here. Maybe that'll work. Because uh, when you get them in a can, of course, they're already smashed. And I did not smash smash them or cut them up. But Hector told me that the uh, neat trick with the um, with the shears. Now I'm remembering. I did yes, I did remove the skin. Uh, they are. Um, Yes, I did peel the tomatoes. Uh, by peeling the tomatoes, I peeled them with, uh, by boiling them for about 45 to 60 seconds. Uh, will you burn the shallots? Uh, they're garlic, uh, sorry, these are onions. Um, they're browning. They're supposed to be, they're supposed to be browned and softened, uh, not, not, not burnt. Um, so I've turned the temperature down. Um, it, they appear to be browning uh, and not burning, which is kind of what I want. So that's a good thing. Um, I turned the heat down. So in the last two minutes, um, or last four minutes, uh, I'm going to cook the shrimp over here. Okay, good. Yay. So yes, just trying to create the, uh, the sauce here. I want to make sure I get all the, all the garlic in there. Wait a minute, did I put garlic in there? No, I just put onions. You know what? I don't think I did. I don't think I did, but this would be a good time to do it. Because I had, I see extra garlic sitting there, and I think that's the garlic that was supposed to go in. Now the temperature needs to come back up again. So this is uh, supposed to reduce down into a sauce eventually. Yes, but these are peeled. I peeled and cored them. They would they would come out of a can, but they uh, but not because I didn't want to have to use half a can for one thing. Okay, this is smoking a little bit, so I need to turn that down. Uh, but we're gonna fry the uh, shrimp over there and that's gonna go for about two minutes uh, in there and then um, there's gonna be white wine which is right here uh, something about the can sorry I missed that but we have white wine that we're gonna be adding over here to the shrimp uh, once we get that going uh, induction stove no no just I would uh, no just a regular electric stove uh, it's very fussy. Uh, I wish I had a gas stove, but uh, here gas is uh, not not a thing, at least not where I live. And uh, if you if you've been following along, uh, this whole thing started uh, four years ago when, after mm, decades of not knowing to cook, I decided to uh, learn to cook by doing the food of a different country in alphabetical order, one country a week, starting with Afghanistan. And now I've completed, I went from all the way from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. So this is the big celebration, me cooking the food of my people of Puerto Rico uh, to celebrate that accomplishment. And then we're going to have four weeks of doing a couple non-UN countries, electric sucks, no control. Yes, I know, I feel the exact same way. I didn't have any feelings about it before, but I never didn't have to cook before. So I didn't see what the difference was. And now I see what the difference is. 
and that's a pain, but hey, you know, you uh, you you work you work with what tools you have, All right? Miss Pa. So that's the name of that tune. So these are breaking down a little bit, which is good. We've got the reggaeton going. Mom and Dad's favorite. They love the reggaeton. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Commenting on Periscope is a bit like trying to cook with an electric cooker. Yeah, you never know. You never know if uh, it's going to work. Yeah, it's after you go through the trouble of typing everything. Yeah. And sometimes I watch some Periscope, so there's like a million people commenting all at once and just flying across the screen. So, uh, you know, people can't stop and see the insults, you know? Um, I need to clear off some space over here because we're going to be plating uh, in that area. So I'm going to need that space to do that. And this uh, it's going to be dressed, uh, the dish is going to be dressed with uh, iceberg lettuce, shredded iceberg lettuce, and some um, tomato wedges right here. So uh, I'm waiting. Uh, a couple minutes uh, before I throw on the um, the shrimp because I don't want that to be overdone. So I'm trying to be patient. Trying to be patient. Not 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 my strong suit, but I'm working on it. No, yeah. Um, as I uh, mentioned before, this kitchen uh, when we bought the place, I said, "My, what a lovely kitchen! I'll take it." Uh, I'm never gonna cook in there, but you know, but it's nice. And little did I know that I would be broadcasting cooking to the world. Quite literally. The world to the world. And like I said, this is the, probably the first time that, uh, aside from the United States, that uh, I'm cooking something and... I don't, potato mash will break them down faster. Um, it would. It would. Um, I'm just kind of worried because that's metal. And there's a nonstick. So that's that's my concern. So that's uh, that's my thought process. Uh, I'm trying to avoid having to use that potato masher because of that. Okay, I think we are at time on that. So let's go with, uh, with this and hope for the best with the shrimp. Well, that's simmered down now over here. Bulldozer will break them down too. Indeed, it would. Okay, here. So let's uh, give you a little rotation. And let's go with the shrimp. Stand back. So I'm going to cook those for about two minutes until they curl up. Damn it, with the splattering. Stand back. I always have to wind up cleaning the screens of everything, wiping everything down with disinfectant after I cook everything. Oh, and that's another problem with this cast iron skillet. Um, because it's electric and the size of it, the heat, it's very hot in the middle and not so much around the outside. So I always have to be very aware of that, because things don't cook evenly, which is a problem. Uh, but again, these are locally caught, wild, uh, fresh, uh, peeled and cleaned shrimp. And this is for the mofongo estofado, the stuffed mofongo, where they stuff our mofongo with the shrimp. And in a moment, we'll be adding something to this so they're starting to curl up so they're almost done you there flip over thank you and now okay that's exactly time so now we're going to add our wine this is a uh, about half a cup of wine white wine going in over that I'm gonna let that come to a boil. Uh, I do not know. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add the garlic in here. 
That's again three cloves of garlic. Sorry, I missed your comment there on Buster. Apaga la estufa. Se lo tengo muy bajo ahora. Pero tengo que cocinar el ajo aquí. I have to cook the garlic here. Camarones. Camarones, yes. But no, it has to come to a boil first and then to bring it down. So I want to cook that garlic quickly. I should have, I don't know. I, I, I may have missed where it was supposed to go in the first place, to be honest. In my rush to get everything done today. But the, uh, the uh, tomato sauce is looking nice. It's breaking down. And we have a... So off with the stove. Garlic before wine. Yeah, I know. I, I, I realized that. I goofed. When I was writing out my script, uh, sacale el chucharón que te quema. No, esto, esto se tiene que, que bajar un poquito. Uh, como dos minutos más. Two more minutes on this. And then this will be done. Uh, but, but, but you're right. Estoy apagando la tufa. I'm turning off the stove right now. On the shrimp. And then uh, we're going to be ready. So this can go. Let me get some plates. And then there's going to be an interesting plating method. I apologize if I don't see your comments. Oh. So cool. Se ve rico, yes. I need to taste it too. That would be a thing a smart person would do. I tend to not do that. That's a mistake. Okay. Spoon, taste. We're going to taste our tomato sauce. La salsa de tomate, si que si que si que es. Anybody, any Puerto Rican, Boricua, se acuerdan de eso? Esa salsa de guana, si que si que si que si que es. Mmm. Mmm, yummy. Okay. So here we go. Take a deep breath. Okay. I'm gonna get the mofongo out of the stove, out of the oven where it's been keeping warm. And here's the deal. And you need to get ramekins. And I have one here. Turning this off. Uh, I need to move to the plating stations. I can't do this over the stove. So you're moving again. Over here. And you're moving over here. This is going to be a tricky operation. So if I don't see your comments again, I apologize. Okay, ow, hot. That's why I brought the oven mitt. I think I would use it. Uh, no me acuerdo, pero la familia de llamas. Yo nací a cría. Ah, ahora. Buenas. Sí. Ah, uh, okay. Hold on. So we are going to take. And again, I apologize if I don't see your comments while I do this. Okay. This and put it into the ramekin here, or in this bowl in this case. Take about half of it. And I'm going to mash it down. And then, hopefully, this is going to work. No de la cuchara dentro de la. Oh, yeah. Oh, gracias. Por acá. Okay. Uh, ¿Qué es ese plátano? Este es mofongo. Ese plátano con una salsita y así está el mofongo. Ay, lo debía poner en el medio. Should put that in the middle. And now we're going to do the other one. Got to get the oven mitt. Okay. Uh, spoon. 
bulb. Okay, it's very good. Tiene un buen sabor. Le puse el sal como, como debe estar. Okay. I may have picked the bowl too big, the ramekins, but uh, I wasn't sure how much. Beautiful pile. Thank you. Tastes good, too. Okay, this can go away. Uh, this goes this way. And then you go over here. Yibbidoo. Okay. Now, onto this. Um... Oh shoot! I don't. I can't carry this whole uh, big, heavy cast iron skillet over. So I'm taking the uh, the shrimp out. So if I don't see your comments again, I apologize. Uh, I'm a little occupied right now. Okay. Okay. So for the garlic, uh, for the shrimp, mom was suggesting making a hole in the, in the mofongo, so I'm going to do that. Ah! Which kind of didn't stick together too well. Okay. Go back up. You. Um, what am I grabbing this with? Where my tongs go? Okay. Ah, eh, wash. Okay, shrimp. Puerto Rico! Put the camera on the Again, I apologize if I don't see the comments. Little occupied, looking down. Maybe one more over here. The rest can be leftovers. Okay, there, yay! And now the tomato sauce. Going over that. Something didn't occur to me, but it's okay. It's rustic. We'll just call it rustic. I'll clean that up. Save some of that for later. And then we're dressing the dish. I'm sorry I didn't see your comment there. With some iceberg lettuce around the outside. Around the outside. Around the outside. Again, I probably, uh, it's okay, I just said it looks delicious. Oh, that I'm, <laughs> hey it Justin. Smells delicious too. Yes. And it's so tasty too. So, uh, this is the shredded iceberg lettuce here. And uh, now that's gonna go somewhere. And then we're gonna put in the uh, wedges of tomato. On the outside. Oh, that's a big wedge. My knife still not that great. Uh, that is my husband, who is uh, getting started on the dishes early. And there we go. So let me clean that up a little bit. Wash my hands. I need to stack the water. Okay. And uh, so we have some leftover shrimp. Yay. Um, the, yeah, uh, he's trying. Trying uh, to learn Spanish. Un poco. Un poco. Un poquito. 
after 25 years. Nice roasted jalapenos are good. Yeah, uh, well, that would be nice, but Puerto Ricans are notorious for not having spicy food. Jalapenos would be very, very not Puerto Rican. Uh, normally, yes, my husband. Um, we would, uh, if you like hot food, you would have uh, some uh, hot sauce on the side that you would put on your own, but uh, the chef would not add that because uh, Puerto Ricans are notorious for not doing hot, spicy food. Uh, move to old van and I'll have the choice. I need to make a good couple. Thank you very much. Really, wow, yes. 25 years. So, uh, this is, ladies and gentlemen, our mofongo. Mofongo estofado con camarones y salsa tomate. It's uh, mashed plantains with shrimp and a tomato sauce. That's uh, right over there, too. So, I'll give you guys a closer look. You guys been there 25? Yes, indeed. Uh, so our 25, 25th anniversary passed last May. So here you go, mofongo. Mucho gusto. So thank you so much. We gotta go eat. So remember to like on Facebook, follow on Twitter, on Instagram, Pinterest, and find us on YouTube. Just search for Cliffy Land, Cliffy Land, and please subscribe. Uh, mofongo, mofongo estofado, mashed plantains with uh, shrimp and a tomato sauce. So thank you for joining us. Please uh, like and subscribe wherever you can. Thank you very much. And until next time, uh, when we cook uh, Kosovo next week. Kosovo, check us out. Bye.